Hello, welcome back to Catholic Reboot. Today is the uh, feast day of St. Monica, who was the mother of St. Augustine, or if you want to say Augustine. Um, you know, before I get into it, I just want to let you know, I'm actually, this is the 103rd episode, and even though it's only showing 91, what happens is when I do certain episodes, I'll have part one, part two, part three, and so over the series, they'll start adding up, but I'll stay true to the labeling. So when we hit 100, it'll be Yahoo. Um, you know, when I look at uh, St. Monica, you know, I, I think about all the churches I grew up with uh, as a kid. So you would you know the churches in your neighborhood, you know the churches in other neighborhoods. And there was a church of St. Monica. And I remember during the turbulent... 70s when um, my dad would take us from one church to another in an attempt to avoid uh, the what we call the modernization effects of Vatican II. So my dad would start to hear something out of a priest at a church and then would say, okay, that's it here. And then we'd move on to another church. Uh, and we were actually, instead of being Roman Catholics, uh, in those days, we were Roaming Catholics. Uh, I took that line from Michael Matt. It's actually a very good line uh, because it's exactly what happened. So my dad was uh, a, a real defender of the faith. So as we went to these other churches, I would try to find out, you know, who are these saints? You know, so we had St. Monica, we had St. Williams, we had St. Peter Canatius. We had St. Vincent Farrar, St. Priscilla. And so as, you know, growing up, you're like, well, I really need to know who they are. And I remember learning about St. Monica sometime in high school and realized uh, she was truly a mother, right? Because she she had so much going against her. And as mothers often do, uh, when things get the toughest, it's always the mother who seems to be the strongest. Um, they fight, they fight, and they fight. They they will never give up. And that's what St. Monica did uh, most of her life, right? Um, so when anybody ever uh, thinks that the mother in the family isn't significant, they just don't know their history, right? I mean, look at the Blessed Mother. Look look at how much strength she had to have for Jesus, not only throughout his life, but through his passion and death. So this is the feast day of St. Monica. But for certain, uh, to a certain sense, because we're getting close to Mother's Day, I would say uh, she represents the typical pious mother that we've all come to love and know. So... St. Monica uh, was born in 332 to 388. Uh, oh, let me stop here a second. So whenever I follow up with a video that someone else has done, I do it because they come up a little bit more than I did or do. And so I thought maybe that just helps. Some of it may be repeated, but repetition is a great educator. Other things like the video that's going to follow this, Came up some things I didn't know about St. Monica. All right, so she uh, lived from 332 to 388. So uh, if we do our math, she was, what, 56 years old? Um, uh, St. Monica, as I said before, was the mother of St. Augustine. Uh, she was originally born into a Christian family, uh, and I did not know that. I thought she was a convert herself, but she wasn't. So she was born into a Christian family. And when I say Christian, I mean Catholic, because that's all there was. Uh, in this, the ancient city of Tagasta in northern Africa. Now, after what they said was a childhood of innocence and piety, because she probably had a wonderful mother, um, she was... Uh, was basically given in marriage, as they say, to Patricus, who was a pagan. 
Now, she devoted herself most of their uh, married life, if not all, to his conversion and was constantly praying for him in order to uh, get him in this state of holiness, right? Let me stop here again. Uh, most women uh, don't realize the influence they have over their husbands, right? If a woman is pious and holy, even though men by nature tend to be a little rough around the edges, the woman has the effect of rounding off her husband, right? And that's what Monica was doing, right? So she was very patient with him, but she worked very hard at his conversion. And eventually he was baptized right before his death. I mean, he waited pretty long, but uh, he was finally baptized uh, before dying. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Her son Augustine, <clears throat> I always love the story of St. Augustine because he always gives me hope. He went uh, pretty far off the rails, you know, uh, in in all his habits. And um, she, she basically kept praying for him, right? And uh, she then realized that he just wasn't going to respond. So she went uh, to a bishop and to talk to uh, him about her son. Uh, and she was saying, you, get, you have to help him come into a better disposition in life. But the bishop declined um, because he basically knew of Augustine uh, and knew that he was very headstrong, although he did say to her, Augustine is very gifted. He kind of refused because maybe he knew Augustine's temperament at that time. Uh, but then uh, St. Monica, because she was uh, basically breaking down and crying, uh, he said to her, just have the courage, uh, because by your tears, uh, he will not perish in his conduct of life, right? So the bishop knew the power of the mother and knew that she didn't really need him because she was the strength that St. Augustine needed and she should be persistent. Um, so Augustine, uh, you know, going into Italy was able from uh, time to time uh, to get an understanding of what his mother uh, was talking to him about. But uh, she was, what they say, constantly praying. And he, he was basically trying to get away from her because she was, uh, she was trying to pray uh, every time she was around him, thinking the conversation she had with the bishop was, that's what she should be doing. So when he went to Italy, she followed him to Italy. Um, and it was there that he actually was converted. Uh, so they say her sorrow was turned to joy, right? So at uh, Ostasia, uh, right before they were uh, to go back to Africa, Augustine and his mother sat at a window talking uh, about the things of the church and about uh, life as a blessing. And then she turned to him and said, my son, there is nothing now I care for in this life, but I shall now do or why I remain on this earth, I know not. The one reason I had for wishing to linger in this life a little longer was that I might see you a Catholic Christian before I die. This grace God has granted me, seeing you reject earthly happiness to become his servant. Now, uh, that is almost a beautiful prayer from a mother to a child, right? And once again, uh, look at the perfect order she had in her life, the complete love for her son, she wasn't concerned if he had the latest and greatest possessions. Like many of the mothers today uh, who kind of fall victim to this, this modern secularism, they don't necessarily worry about the state of the soul of their children, right? And what St. Monica is demonstrating is this is all that's important to her. So if parents uh, feel that uh, talking to their children about saving their soul isn't important. They need to take a lesson from St. Monica. Now, there's a way of doing it, right? In St. Monica's case, 
quite honestly, St. Augustine really took off for Italy because he wanted to get away from her. He's probably tired of her trying to save him, right? She followed him, right? So as parents, we have to follow our children through their life where they're at and keep on trying to get in there and help save their souls, right? We don't want to browbeat them, right? We don't want to uh, uh, be too too aggressive, which completely turn them off. It's kind of like that fine art of knowing when to back off and then knowing when to come back in and reminding them, right? And this is why the uh, the sacramentals, the rosaries, the devotions are beautiful instruments in order to get the kids the sanctifying grace. Because in the end, although St. Monica worked feverishly, you know uh, Christ and the Blessed Mother and the Holy Ghost were working behind the scenes to put things into his mind. And it was probably through her fervent devotion and um, sacramentals that provided the sanctifying grace. Now, a few days afterward, uh, that incident with her and her son, when she said that, uh, she had uh, came down with a fever and then actually died, at the, as I said earlier, at the age of 56 in the year uh, 388. Now, me being 60, uh, you know, 56 to me is young. When I was little, it was old. And you start realizing that... Uh, life is fleeting. You know, you have to start taking account of things fairly quickly in your life because you never know when it's going to be over. And then it, all the, the time you could have devoted to important things, we wasted with a lot of this nonsense, right? So let's use the feast day of St. Monica uh, for the following reasons. Uh, it's a precursor to Mother's Day. So even more so... Um, Rather than get flowers and gifts for your mother, why don't you have a mass said for her? Or better yet, why don't you pick her up and take her to mass, okay? Uh, second, uh, as a parent, okay, and, and let's let's direct this towards mothers because it's St. Monica. Don't ever give up on your children. If you see them falling off. Now look, when we, you, in the video that follows, it goes into a little bit of what St. Augustine was doing. This guy was doing some pretty, um, uh, I don't want to say bad things, but he was, uh, you know, having relations with a married woman. He had a child with a married woman. Uh, he, he was a little bit of a party animal. She had all the reasons the world say, forget it. It's never going to change. So that's number two. Don't ever give up on your children. And then three, uh, your pious life is going to provide sanctifying graces. And so if you think it's all for naught, Christ will use those graces to affect the lives of others. You may not be the main reason. So continue to live a pious life. Continue to receive sanctifying graces because they may be intended for somebody else as Monica's was for Augustine. Okay. Have a beautiful um, St. Monica feast day, and thank you very much. St. Monica, also known as Monica of Hippo, is St. Augustine of Hippo's mother. She was born in 331 AD and died 387 AD. She was canonized pre-congregation and is recognized as the patroness of wives and abuse victims. Her feast day is August 27th. Though she was a practicing Christian, at a very young age Monica was married to a Roman pagan named Patricius. Her life of prayer and holiness bothered her husband, but it is believed he respected her beliefs and he loved her. Unfortunately, Patricius's mother lived with them and she shared his violent temper. The two presented daily challenges to Monica, but she was patient and prayed they would convert to Christianity. Over the years, Monica gave birth to two sons, Augustine and Navigius, and one daughter named Perpetua. Since Patricius was not a Christian, he refused to allow their children to be baptized. However, Augustine fell ill and Monica pleaded with her husband to allow their son to be baptized. 
Patricius saw how ill his son was and conceded, but later changed his mind when Augustine became well again. For several years after Augustine's illness, Monica prayed for her husband and mother-in-law. One day, when Augustine was 16 years old, they both finally embraced the Christian faith. One year later, Patricius passed away. At her husband's passing, Monica sent her lazy and wayward son to Carthage for an education. When he returned, she learned he had become a Manichaean, and she turned him away. He also was engaged in a relationship with a woman outside of marriage. The two even had a son whom they had named Adiodatus. Later, she received a vision in which she was advised to reconcile with her son. Her two other children later entered the religious life, and so Monica set off in search of Augustine. She eventually came upon St. Ambrose, who helped her to speak to Augustine. The influence of this holy bishop also had a great influence on Augustine and helped lead him to Jesus Christ and the Church. Augustine was baptized along with his son and a friend. Monica passed away after seeing this answer to her prayer, and her body was buried in Ostia. It was moved to Osta, near the tomb of St. Aria of Ostia. Then in 1430, Pope Martin V ordered her relics to be brought to Rome. Numerous miracles were reported to have occurred along the way. Later, Cardinal de Estoteville built a church to honor St. Augustine called the Basilica de Sant'Agostino, where her relics can still be found to the left of the high altar.